These men are extremely concerned. They've been stuck at an altitude of 3,000 meters for half a day already. Here, the snow is permanent. What they don't want to do is spend the night on the mountainside, on the Lawari Pass, known to all as Hell's Road, which has partially collapsed. The driver's only solution is to rebuild it themselves. This is the place, very, very dangerous place. In uh, some time the road is closed, but now only little open for the people. The people have some problem like the, uh, but now they are repairing already, inshallah. In a few minutes after, we will cross, inshallah, and we will go. It's taken the drivers seven hours to fill in the gap. The pass is roadworthy, at least for the time being. The Lawari Pass begins in the town of Deir, in the tribal regions of northwest Pakistan. The road is 240 kilometers long and is the only supply route through the mountains to the small villages of the Shitral Valley, which is shared with Afghanistan. A road where even the slightest error can be fatal. Most dangerous, the most vicious is the Lawari Pass. There are major accidents where drivers are killed. Aren't you scared of dying on this road? Yes, yes, of course we're scared of dying. With the help of God, we'll get through the tunnel of death. Change gears, will you? Do you want to kill us? We have lot many worries. We have worries that we may not come back uh, to our homes. We may not meet our children. An accident can place in an area like Lawari Pass anytime. The holy city of Deir and its 20,000 inhabitants make their living off the road. Each day, tons of goods are loaded and unloaded from trucks, the only means of transport in the region. The trucker's quarter provides most of the jobs here. Drivers, mechanics, assistants of all ages work here every day amid the dust and pollution. 23-year-old Kamara is a successful businessman. He already owns two trucks. One of his trucks, laden with two tons of sugar for a village in the Chitral, is about to tackle the Lawari Pass. And not surprisingly, he's worried. He has his best driver at the wheel. Let me introduce you to Dawood, my driver. He's getting paid $60 a month. And he works with his younger brother. They're a very good team, very brave. $60 a month is the average Pakistani salary. Few drivers would accept the risks of the pass for that money, so Kamara is offering a $90 bonus each way, a bonus the younger drivers find irresistible. This is Khalid, Dawood's younger brother. He's the assistant. Isn't 14 too young? Well, when you're poor, you have no other choice. What does your brother do exactly? He helps me guide the truck past the trickiest parts of the road by giving me directions. And he also lets me know if there are any problems ahead. Is he good? He has to be, otherwise I won't teach him how to drive the truck.
At seven in the morning, it's time to start. The journey along the Lawari Pass is far from being a picnic. Over 240 kilometers, the road snakes through the mountains and breathtaking corniches. In theory, it should take one day to reach the destination, but there are few drivers that can manage that. Dawood, however, is eager to get the trip over as quickly as possible, despite the danger. He wants to make as many journeys as possible in order to take advantage of the bonuses. So he drives without stopping and seems to spend his life behind the wheel of his truck. I have a very close relationship with my truck. It's like my home. I eat here and I sleep here. I spend more time here than I do at home. Dawood has been a driver for 10 years. The truck is ageless. The odometer has been stuck forever on 776,000 kilometers. The brothers don't appear to care and have decorated the truck in their own fashion. Photos of Benazir Bhutto form a collage with those of the Indian pop stars young Pakistanis idolize. Two thousand meters up and the first difficulties. Melting snows from torrents that slice through the road dozens of meters at a time creating holes and landslides. To get past this torrent, we drive slowly and in first gear because of the potholes that could be beneath the water. How dangerous is that? When we're as heavily laden as we are, it could break the steering shaft, but worse than that would be to tip over. Every trip damages the tires further, cut up by the sharp rocks and already deformed. So Khalid checks them one by one for any risk they might burst. The Lawari Pass poses one problem after another. To help them relax, the drivers smoke the local drug. Smoking hashish stops me worrying about all the problems I'll be facing on this road. I forget about the danger. His head elsewhere, Dawood's condition only adds to the dangers of the road. Drugs are one of the main causes of accidents. Four years ago, faced with an increasing number of injured, the Pakistani government financed the construction of a tunnel through the mountains. Look at this tunnel. We'll soon be able to cross through the mountain, which will really make our lives and our jobs far less complicated. But for now, we still have to cross the peak, which is 3,100 meters high, and we never know whether we'll make it or not. Dawood lives just a short distance away. Before tackling the mountain roads, he stops to kiss his children goodbye. Do you see your kids often? No, not really, unfortunately. Will they be drivers? Maybe. Dawood has three kids, two boys and a girl. In this valley, where religion is paramount, the women are obliged to hide themselves from the glances of the men. Dawood even forbids his mother, his wife and his daughter from meeting the crew. There is no future here. We work, that's all. The job has no future. Wouldn't you like to buy a truck eventually? I earn barely enough to feed my family, so how do you think I'll be able to afford a truck? Me, I'm going to save up $45,000 and I'll buy a truck. 
It'll be full of decorations. As soon as I have the money, I'm buying. After a two-hour pause, the brothers resume their travels. The hardest part of the ascent is about to begin. It's an area where the melting snow causes avalanches and landslides. Within an hour, they will have climbed 1,000 meters to a height of three kilometers. A climb that poses a stern challenge to even the most experienced drivers. Khalid, get off and take a look. It seems to look bad up there. The truck struggles to make 10 kilometers an hour on the steep climb. At 2,800 meters, the lack of oxygen causes drowsiness, and concentrating becomes a chore. The smallest movement requires real effort, and staying awake is a major challenge. Three hundred meters to go before the pass, and a chance to rest. Here we are, at the peak. It's very cold up here. Look down there. That's what they call the area of 45 bends. The descent is just awful. Very dangerous, because you need to use the brakes the whole time. And the brakes get overheated. Plus it's narrow, and on the bends there's not enough room for two trucks to pass. So it's vital to concentrate and never take your hands off the wheel. Outside the tavern, the drivers check their merchandise is securely fastened. Inside, others relax from the strain of the climb and gird themselves for the next leg with a hearty meal of boiled mutton, the local speciality. What qualities does a driver need to cross the mountains? A strong heart. And which means what? It means having courage and experience. He who's never had an accident or any mechanical problems will never make it through. Dawood and his brother head off to face the 45 bends. From here on, everything is risky. The road is extremely slippery. Hopefully there won't be too much sludge. Otherwise, it'll be hell. Negotiating the curves becomes a physical battle. The goal is simple. Go downhill without ever stopping and pray no truck is coming the other way. Melting snow has turned the road into a muddy track. Breaking too harshly means losing control and a one-way ticket over the edge into the ravine. When it starts to slide, I do nothing. I just wait for it to finish. You can't even break. The truck would just go anywhere. You see? It's almost impossible to turn the wheel.
Yeah. That's what it's like up here. Dawood owes his life to the perfect control of his truck. But he has no control over nature, of course, and is at the mercy of the sudden avalanches that sweep all before them, such as this electricity pylon. Look at that. The avalanche ripped the pylon right out. And those wires hanging off it could be dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Well, if the top of the truck hits the cables, it would melt the tires and maybe electrocute us too. One final bend and the brothers are finally in the Chitral Valley. The road is better here. It's surfaced and protected by the foothills. It will soon be time for Khalid's driving lesson. But there's bad news in store just a few kilometers further down in the valley. Part of the mountain has slid onto the road, making any further progress impossible. Is it serious? Yeah, look, the mountain's still crumbling. And the road's completely blocked. It's going to take that small tractor the whole day to clear a path through it. Is there another way around? No, this is the only way in the valley. The side of the mountain is unstable and there's a constant series of rock falls. Below, risking life and limb, the workers labor non-stop to open a way through. Hey you, mind the vehicle. It's expensive. Get back a bit. Well, I've got to do my work, haven't I? The rock breaks loose and hits the front of the tractor. Someone has to do this job. I better get back. On either side of the rock fall, one behind the other, some 30 trucks wait for the road to reopen. Some of the truckers have been stuck for days. Some, more patient than others, pass the time as best they can. The road has been blocked at least uh, since last night. I've been here since then. It happens all the time. It's the government's fault for not maintaining the roads properly in this region. Yet it's vital for our work. And when we're stuck like this, we lose a lot of money. It's a small tractor for such a huge mountain. Everybody's pinning their hopes on the big government bulldozer that has been sent out from Drosh a few kilometers away. Drosh is renowned throughout Pakistan for its splendid trucks. And it's no coincidence. Since the small town is where the most famous truck decorating company in the valley, Samin and Co. can be found. It's a family-run business that attracts clients from all over the country. Samin's family gives a new lease of life to the trucks that for the most part date back to the 1960s. When a truck first comes in, it looks like that. And our aim is to make it shine and sparkle like this one. How much would that cost? Well, that depends on the amount of decoration that the owner wants. But it can cost as, as much as two and a half thousand dollars. The shinier it is, the more expensive. Why shinier? Makes the owner look good, shows he's prospering. In the workshop, the finishing touches are being made to this sort of crown. It's work that requires painstaking detail and imagination. The colors and the motives I invent. I do as I please. 
The owner simply wants it to be showy. The crown is finished and will soon decorate the top of the driver's cabin. Ready? And lift. Weighing more than 100 kilos, the whole family helps with the installation. Move it over just a tad to the right and lift it up slightly. In the old days, the decorations were simpler and the owners wanted it inside the cabin. These days, they want them everywhere. It's a lot of work. Is the small kid going to carry on after you? No, it's too difficult. He's going to go to school. The truck's owner has arrived, and tradition has it that it is he who applies the finishing touch. He spent more than $500 on the decorations, equivalent of a seven-month salary. Look, it's decorated all over. You see my speakers? 1,200 amps. And the ventilator, new radio too. Such decorations are good for business. It shows the client that the company is doing well. You see this? It looks great when we're driving. I'm proud of having spent so much money on the truck. In Drosh, a freshly decorated truck is soon the center of attention and everyone has their opinion. Not bad, but I think the best looking trucks are in the south. Go on, put the music on, show us how well it works. Nah, he didn't spend enough money on the decorating. It's important to have a nice-looking truck. It's the same as when you get married. You want the bride to be beautiful, don't you? Which is more important, trucks or women? Women, of course. Women are more important. <laughs> And posing in front of the truck might help impress the ladies. The following morning, on the stretch of road that's been closed, the much-anticipated bulldozer finally arrives. It doesn't take long to clear a path through the rocks. That's it, well done. Just a bit more. Good job. Slow down. Come on, we've wasted enough time already. How long have you been stuck here? Three days. It's only a temporary path through the rubble as the mountain continues to collapse. Braving the rocks, the first drivers chance their luck. Now it's Dawood's turn. His younger brother acts as his guide. They make it and can finally resume their journey. Dawood is particularly proud of his brother, who helped ensure they made the trip in safety and decides to reward him. Okay, come on. Come and sit over there then. Sit 
The rest of the road's easy, so he can drive. Why are you doing this? He needs to start learning the business. Is it difficult? Nah, he'll pick it up quickly. Go on, start. Okay, now you can go faster. You look worried. Nah, not really. As long as I'm next to him, everything will be fine. Aren't you a bit young to drive? Yes, but it's it's what I want to do. Are you scared? No. There's no driving school in these parts. The young are taught by their elders. Go ahead. Okay, go forward. There's no one coming. Up a gear. Drive, drive. Change gears now, or you'll stall. Come on, come on. Too late. Now break. Do as I say, or otherwise I'll punch you. Don't let go of the wheel, you idiot. I told you not to let go. It's dangerous. Okay, all right, we're here. Pull up behind that truck. And put the handbrake on and get out. How's his driving? No, it's not bad actually. He'll make a good trucker? Yeah, if he sticks with me another two or three years, he will. Well, why did you hit him? Because he lets go of the wheel. It's so dangerous to do that on the road. It risks our lives. So he needs a lesson he'll remember. Khalid and Dawood finally make it to Chitral. The 240 kilometer long journey took nearly four days. They now need to unload their consignment quickly and get back on the road as soon as possible to make another round trip before the end of the month. Thanks for your efforts. One more bag and we head back. Ah, we did well. Khalid is somewhat disillusioned. The life of a trucker is not what he had hoped it would be. Chitral is the largest town in the valley. Basic supplies are stocked in the town before being sold to the villages that dot the mountainside along the frontier with Afghanistan. One such village is Parsan, some 35 kilometers from Chitral. Perched at almost 3,000 meters, the small village is completely hemmed in. Its 1,500 inhabitants are consequently self-sufficient, living from hunting, farming, and raising livestock. There's only one way to reach Parsan, a track carved out barely a dozen years ago. Chitral, passengers throng the central depot in the early morning, hoping to get a ride on one of the vehicles heading up to the villages. This is the place where the four-wheel drive vehicles leave from, as it's the only way to get up into the mountains. Trucks can't manage these roads. Haji, 28, owns the jeep that he uses for the drive up to Parsan. Like his father before him, he provides a shuttle service for the villagers several times a week. An entire family is on board for today's trip, 
along one of the most notorious mountain tracks in the region. But his four-wheel drive has a mechanical problem. Oh, look at this, it's leaking everywhere. They need me in the village. I'm the only form of transport they have. If someone gets sick, then it's up to me to transport them. So the jeep needs to be fixed as soon as possible, so we can get going. But the problem is more serious than predicted. A part of the transmission is totally worn out. Look, it's useless now. You look worried. Well, yes, I am. Uh, it's almost impossible to find a spare part. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I've got a serious problem here. Finding the right part in this isolated mountain village is like finding a needle in a haystack. Hello, I'm looking for a replacement for this. No, I, I don't have that. Look somewhere else. Morning. Do you have this? No, no, let me sleep. No, no, I don't have a part like that. Yeah, listen, stop uh, looking, you'll never find it. One last hope in this shop. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. That's sixty dollars. Two hours later, and the Jeep is repaired and ready to face the mountain track. Haji loads one ton of goods and passengers. Sofan, a ten-month-old, and her parents are happy. After two weeks in hospital suffering from fever, the little girl can finally go home. We're going to risk this road. It's dangerous, but there's no other way to get to the village. Are you worried about your family? Yes, especially for the baby. Have a good trip. Thanks. Space is at a premium, and about 10 passengers are squeezed into the back. The family is more comfortably placed next to Haji. Let's listen to some music. Before heading up the mountain, they need to cross the river on an ancient wooden bridge. This is an old bridge. It's been repaired many times, but it's still very fragile. I don't like crossing it. Listen to the noise it makes. No one ever stops on that. They're too scared. After the bridge, the next challenge is to make the village before nightfall. Spending the night on the mountainside could prove fatal. Freezing sub-zero temperatures and rockfalls that could sweep the vehicle away are the biggest fears. Pay his respects to a friend killed on the road, Azam is heading up to the village for the wake. Last year he was dead by the accident. So I need to go there to meet their family, his wife and his sons and his children. The road is terrible. In some parts it is very dangerous and sometimes he's sleeping. The, the guardian will be asleep and going fall down. So this happened sometimes.
During the day, the temperatures are unbearable, reaching 40 degrees. An overheated engine needs constant attention. Three hours into the journey and the passengers are suffering from the scorching heat. Salana, my baby. You'll be all right, don't worry. We'll soon be there. She's thirsty, the poor thing. This is the most dangerous part. It's called the Tunnel of Death. May Allah protect us. God is great. He will protect us. He has to. The Tunnel of Death is some 10 kilometers of a hand-carved passage that runs through the mountain. The roof is unstable and falling rocks are constant danger. When this was being built, two workmen were killed when they fell into the ravine. Everyone's scared of this place. without incident, but the relief is short-lived. At the Tunnel of Death's exit, the river is swollen, making it impossible to get past. They'll have to spend the night on the mountainside. Hey, go and look down by the river. Uh, we've now got a major problem. The current's too strong to cross now. I don't think we can make it today. Solana's mother is worried to distraction. Some of the more intrepid passengers take their lives into their hands and try to cross the river on foot. It's impossible. There's no way to cross this one. There's no way to get across. One foolhardy youngster gives it a go. With a river that can't be crossed and a freezing night in prospect, Salana's parents can no longer wait. We're carrying on on foot. We just can't risk being stuck here all night. It's a long way to the village. But we've got no choice. OK, come on, let's go. Under a merciless sun, the family starts the climb. Take her, please. I, I can't manage her anymore. The footpath dates back to the years before the road track. The baby's grandfather, worried by the swollen rivers, has headed down to meet his family. Look, sweetie, that's where we live, up there. It's at least another three hours on foot to the house. How are you? Oh, we're fine. Here, yeah, take, take the little girl. She's tired. Whenever my family uses the track, I'm scared. I never know if I'll ever see them again. So I always head down to wait for them on the side of the road and to help if there's a problem, like today. But everything's all right now. Cover her up, please. She, she needs to sleep.
locked outside, Solana's father has in the meanwhile resumed weaving wool in the manner that's been used for generations and which hasn't altered in centuries. We weave at home and then go down to town to sell it. It's a way to make a bit of money. There's not much else we can do up here to make a living. <laughs> the wool sells for three dollars a meter in the markets of Chitral, enough to purchase a few clothes and pay for the lift in the jeep. Down on the road, spirits have lifted as the waters have begun to slowly recede and to make the crossing in the vehicle easier, the passengers are helping place stones on the riverbed. You see the water, it's flowing very fast. Uh, the, the vehicles can't cross easily. That's why they are putting the stone there. Mm. It will move. Push, push. And again, and again. One more time. Okay, all together now. And again. Great, now we can cross. Oh, I'm happy. I've told the passengers to get off. It's safer this way. Come on then, climb on board. Kilometers on, and the village of Parsan is finally in view. Give me the bag of sugar, please. Haji has taken 10 hours to cover the 35 kilometers, but he's still smiling since once again he's cheated death. I'm happy. I'm here at home with my family and friends. God was on our side again. Elsewhere in the village, Azam has reached the house where the wake will take place. Nawaz, the son of the deceased, greets him. Hello, my friend. How are you? Are you well? Yes, I'm well. And you? My condolences for your father. Thank you. How's your mother doing? May God help us all she passed away. What happened? A few months after the father's accident, it was her turn to be taken. Surprisingly, it's in the remotest parts of Pakistan that women are the most liberated. Religion is important here, of course, but it's interpreted in a more flexible manner. Here, women are not hidden from the eyes of men. Look, these are the last pictures of my father. I was also in the jeep when the accident happened. The driver hadn't engaged the vehicle into four-wheel drive, and so it overturned. That's how my father died. And you weren't hurt? Neither myself nor the other passengers had a scratch. To help celebrate the wake, Nawaz will sacrifice one of his finest goats. Here, we'll take this one. She's nice and big and plump, perfect. I thank you, Allah, for accepting this sacrifice, this goat, in your name. Give me the knife, please. The knife has to be as sharp as possible so the goat doesn't suffer any pain. 
Causing pain is a sin. The sacrifice must honor the animal. Uh, come and help me, please. Okay, go on then. Allah is great. Allah is great. The skins are important because we use them to make drums and also very warm blankets as well as covers to protect our backs when we're carrying very heavy loads. We also make shoes for the winter from them. Very good shoes. They prevent you from sliding in the snows. We look after our sheep, you see. Nawaz personally prepares the meal. Thirty guests, all men, are expected that evening. The musicians begin their dirge in honor of the dead. It's in praise to the road that, despite its victims, is the lifeline that links them to the outside world.